Uh, today, a Finnish newspaper reporter contacted me and wanted to interview me about uh, Natural Selector's little rampage uh, where he killed eight people um, and himself. Um, uh, she, she sent me more questions than I really expected her to, uh, or him to. I'm not sure if it's a male or female journalist. I'm just assuming her for some reason. Uh, they, they sent me more questions that I really felt like typing out the answers to, so I'm just going to answer them in this video, and it will also answer the questions of other reporters out there who have been contacting me for a while now since this all went down. Um, the first question is, when was the first time you noticed Pekka Avenins? Um, also, I, I have no idea how to pronounce Finnish words or what the pronunciations of things in Finnish are. So, um, if my Finnish is bad, it, it, well, it is bad, so just excuse it, please. Pekka Avenins rants. When you were first in contact with him, I mean, what was there between you before your June 7, 2007 video? Um, uh, uh, Pekka first came to my attention um, after a user by the name of Robin McVeigh, who, um, by the way, I've reconciled with and is actually a very sweet person despite um, some very large um, philosophical and moral disputes between the two of us. Uh, she uh, sent me a death threat in a email uh, basically saying she wanted to shoot me in the head. And um, I thought that was interesting. I'm not unused to death threats. I get plenty of death threats from Christians and Muslims and uh, even a few Buddhists uh, and what have you. So I'm used to death threats, but usually they don't come from women. And uh, it was very strange to get a death threat from a woman. It was kind of arousing, to be honest with you. And um, I don't know why that's arousing, but it is. Um, and she wrote me, and I, 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 she was kind of my gateway to seeing all these admirers of uh, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the Columbine shooters, and it turned out that she was um, um, affiliated with a lot of these people, and it came to my attention, I was very disturbed by the way that they had turned uh, these two uh, mass murderers into heroes. Now, of course, turning mass mur murderers into heroes is nothing new. I mean, we've always done it. Um, Alexander the Great, he's a hero because he conquered the lands and murdered thousands, perhaps millions. Uh, Jesse James, uh, Billy the Kid, whatever. You know, you know, history is wrought with examples of us idolizing and exemplifying murders. Um, that is human nature. Uh, so it, it's not, it wasn't really surprising, but I guess, I guess I thought that modern sensibilities had moved beyond that to an extent. And of course, you're always naive when you think humanity has progressed beyond a certain point, because we never genuinely do. Um, so uh, I became very upset by that, and I realized that these people were at a high risk for committing acts of violence themselves, because when you're isolated, and you turn uh, murderers into heroes, and they become these great god-like figures in your mind, who are you going to want to emulate? I mean, we all want to emulate our heroes, so if your heroes are murderers, it stands to reason that you might go out and commit an act of murder, uh, because you want to be like them. And if you look at Pekka's plan, it was very much obvious, at least to me, that he was directly mimicking Eric Harris in particular. Um, I understood you emailed each other some insults. Was that so, or were they YouTube messages? If you have any of those messages left, could you please forward them? Don't think anyone would object to that. Uh, I don't have them. Unfortunately, I am in the habit of deleting YouTube messages instantly after I read them. Um, I also don't have any of our IM conversations. Um, we didn't have very many. I think we probably talked five or six times tops. Um, we didn't have much of a private dialogue. Most of the conversation that we had was in videos or in comment sections of videos, which I think are now gone because his accounts were deleted. Um, it's, and that's unfortunate, really. But um, 
but we had very much a public discourse. I think if we had, had talked one-on-one, -on -one, we might have gotten along a little bit better because when you're talking in front of a crowd, you're not really talking with a person, you're talking at them for the benefit of a crowd. And um, I think that, you know, I mean, um, later on I found out that he was actually quite pleased with my videos towards him, that far from uh, feeling owned by them, he used them, he, he saw them as somewhat of a badge of honor for himself. And I think that's why he reached out to me later and, and uh, made apologies to me and tried to build a friendship with me, but I wasn't interested in a friendship. Um, uh, sadly, mostly because I don't like talking to guys. I, I like hanging out with girls. They, they, I don't know, they understand me better and I understand them better. Um, I've never been one of, I've never been one for guy talk, so I, I just kind of ignored him. And um, it's really unfortunate, I really wish I hadn't, because I think that maybe if I had been a friend to him, he wouldn't have done this. Now, that's a naive thought. I mean, chances are he, of course, would have done this, but perhaps if, if I had uh, reached back when he reached out to me, uh, this wouldn't have happened, but there's no way of knowing. Um, did you know his real name or the fact that he was from Finland? I knew he was from Finland, and I knew his first name. I didn't know his full name. I knew that his first name was Pekka. Um, what was there that made you talk about warning signs? You really had to have some really special feelings that this could be serious or you wouldn't have done that video, right? Well, I mean, the, the warning signs, these, these were not warning signs that only I could have picked up on. They weren't warning signs that only I picked up on. A lot of people saw this going down. A lot of people saw that this could happen. Um, and uh, I think that those who did see it did as much as they possibly could to stop it um, from ever happening. Uh, I told people, you know, contact the authorities about these people because they're dangerous. And a lot of people didn't like that. They saw that as a threat to freedom of speech. And of course, I never, I never said to arrest these people. I never said to prosecute them for anything. I just said that they probably bear watching. I don't think that it's that it's anti-freedom to just say that maybe someone requires a little bit uh, more attention than most other people. I mean, if someone has a history of violence or someone is constantly talking about violence or obsessed with violence, then they, they're probably a risk for violence. I mean, I'm not talking about people who are obsessed with fantasy violence, people who like to play Grand Theft Auto or Manhunt 2 or whatever. I'm talking about people who... Um, talk constantly about committing actual acts of violence, who say that they see no moral problem with killing other people for, uh, for fun or for cause or whatever, who say that they view human, human beings as subhuman and themselves as superhuman, those are obvious signs that someone's going to do this. This could have been, maybe not prevented, but at least, at least noticed. I mean, th th this is the kind of thing, I mean, and another problem was that when I pointed it out to people, people very um, people like to lash out at these kids and, and be like, "You're a fucking idiot, and you're a moron, and all this." And I'm guilty of it too. But um, what we probably should have done was maybe try to reach out to them, see what the fuck they're so goddamn angry about, maybe try to you know influence them positively. Um, but you know that you know maybe there is no way to do that. Maybe they're just so jaded to the world that they can't see that there are good things out there. Um, I, I really don't know. What did you think about him? Did you notice he was a loner? Did you notice that everything was not right? Well, as I just said, it was pretty obvious that everything wasn't right. Uh, and he, he, he didn't strike me as a loner because he had a lot of friends here on YouTube. Um, but, um... I guess he probably was a loner in his day-to-day -day life. He must have felt isolated from human beings if he was able to do the stuff that he did. Um, did you ever think it really could happen? Well, obviously I did. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made that video. I, I mean, it, it um, you know, I, I didn't think it would, but I definitely thought it could, and it, it ended up happening, and it was very distressing to me, obviously. Um... Is there anything else in addition to the Wired story, re what happened, you'd like to add or think we should tell in our story? Um, I think the most important thing to emphasize 
uh, when you're telling this story is that this was not uh, the case of some psychopath or some sociopath with no human emotions. Uh, this guy had remorse. I mean, he apologized to me just for arguing with me. So it's obvious that he had, he was capable of the feeling of regret. So he obviously had uh, some human emotion. He was not some kind of monster. And um, I think it's important to, to emphasize that that because of his humanity, he perhaps could have been saved. Maybe someone could have healed his uh, dark and worried soul. I don't know. What did you think when you heard what happened in Jokela High School? Where did you hear it? Um, I heard it... I saw his um, video about it, but probably as it was actually happening. And um, of course that was late at night to me, and I went to bed immediately afterwards um, hoping that it was some kind of joke. Uh, but of course I woke up the next morning and found out that pretty much as I had watched that video the night before, he was actually committing uh, his atrocities. And um, I mean, I felt pretty much completely empty that entire day. I mean, um, I felt a sense of, of uh, vindication. There was a little bit of that I told you so, but most, uh, mostly I just felt really sick and nauseous and I just kept questioning myself, like, could I have done more? And of course, the answer to that question is yes, you could have done more, but, but how do you know when to do more? I mean, you know, it's just a matter of hindsight. You look back on something and it, and it seems like, you know, you could have done something to change the way things happened, but without knowing how things would happen in the first place, how do you know what to change? And it becomes this horrible, um, this horrible paradox, and you're just not sure of yourself and your own actions anymore. And um, you just worry that, that every time you get in an argument with someone, that what if they go on a killing spree the next day, you know? And um, it's hard not to blame yourself. I mean, everyone, I think everyone that knew him, I mean, even the people who had just seen his videos and never had any contact with him beyond that, felt uh, some manner of guilt, as if maybe there was something they could have done. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it just really, it was just a really sad and dark day, as you would expect. Um, how have you felt afterwards about the shooting? Well, since then, you know, I've gotten over the idea of I could have done more, I've stopped blaming myself. Um, I've stopped trying to look for someone to blame because you can't ever just point to one thing and say it's this thing's fault. Um, I think there are a number of things that are to blame for it. I think the way that we allow people to idolize uh, murderers like Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, uh, that's, that's a part of the, the disease here. But. Um, it's not just a matter of allowing them to do it, because, of course, you have to allow them. That's what freedom means. It means allowing people to believe that way. And it's, it's well, I mean, if the price of freedom is less security, then that is the price of freedom, and we should all accept that. But at the same time, we have to look at the under, what, what underlying cause is there for, um, for kids like Pekka to... Uh, to idolize these two. And the reason, I think, is because of the intense social ostracization that they um, encounter just on a day-to-day -day basis. And, it, you know, it's partially something that's brought upon by their peers, and it's partially something they bring, about, bring upon themselves. But um, I think we need to start, you know, reaching out to, to the kids that don't have any friends, that are always eating lunch alone. I mean, you know, maybe they need some kind of special attention. Maybe they need a little bit more care and talking to. And, and you know, we need people that are trained to, to, to deal with genuinely disturbed kids. Um, I'm not ready to give up on them and just say, you know, they're fucked. I think we need to, to do something about it. I mean, like, I know that I had a lot of trouble in high 
high school. I mean, I had, uh, I mean, there was probably, I probably could have gone the same way Pekka had. I mean, I think a lot of us feel that way when we look back on our high school days. We think, you know, I could have done that probably if, if, if things had been just a little bit worse or just a little bit different. That could have been me doing that. Um, and that's, that's another important point to emphasize is it really could be just about anyone. You know, it's not just uh, it's not just one t personality type that does this. Pretty much anyone can be driven to this act, and um, we need we need to look a lot more into preventative measures. But unfortunately, it seems like no matter how much you tell people that you need to look into preventative measures, they don't ever do it. They just react to the problems after they occur, and we cannot do that if we want this stuff to stop. We have to look at the root causes. Um, has anybody else from Finland contacted you about this besides at YouTube? Um, yeah, I've gotten contacted by a few other press people, but this is the first thing I've decided to respond to. Uh, what do you think should be done when similar situations occur to prevent these cases? I already answered that one, kind of. Do you think net communities should be more vigilant and more eager to tip authorities? You know, I don't think tipping authorities is always the answer. I think a lot of times the authorities cracking down on something can make it worse. But I think that, you know, there's a big problem here on the internet, especially with these uh, trolls and, and people that are, you know, in, that encourage this kind of behavior and, and stuff. And um, I think you really need to look into um, more positivity on, on the internet. I mean, um, it seems like everyone here is very interested in being petty and cruel to one another and acting a lot less civil than they do in their day-to-day -day lives because they feel like they can get away with it because they feel like they're detached from the repercussions of it but more and more we're seeing that you're not detached from the repercussions of what you say and do here on the internet this is just this can affect reality the things said and done here do affect people's real lives I think that once people start to get a better sense of that, maybe they'll stop being such complete and total assholes to one another. Um, would you like to say something to the people in the Jokela Tusala town? Um, I don't know what I could say to them that would really mean anything after what they've actually been through, but... Um, you know, obviously, I think that the you know uh, everyone that that uh, is connected to this tragedy in any way, shape, or form, obviously, um, put you know you know puts their hearts out for to those people. You know, I mean, um, you've got to. It's just, I mean, it's really, I mean, I don't know. It just feels like everything, anything I could say would just be cheap and meaningless because I mean they've gone through so much and. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just sorry this happened, and um, hopefully it won't happen again. I mean, I think it will, but hopefully it won't. And the final question is, and then what's your title we should use? I mean profession and your hometown and your age. Well, I'm 22 years old. I'm from uh, the Palm Palmdale, Lancaster area in California, and my profession is a uh, graphic designer, so... Uh, you can put all that down in your uh, newspaper article and anyone else who wants to write an article or a blog about this and use quotes from me, that's who I am. Thank you.